hope everybody's safe and well. I'm here with chapter two of Guinea Pigs Online. Good chapter two, Guinea Pigs Wanted. The next morning, Coco was rudely awoken from her beauty sleep by the sound of singing. She peeped out from under the straw and stared in amazement. After what Ben had said about Fuzzy's cooking, Coco had expected to find him moping around the hutch, feeling sorry for himself. But instead, he was racing around the rug, squeaking away loudly to a tune on Radio 2, just as if nothing had happened. The Blisses had left the radio on by mistake. I wish to goodness, she complained, reaching out a delicate paw and helping herself to a dainty morsel of fresh grass. You would stop. One feels a headache coming on. I can't stop, Fuzzy squeaked, dancing a little jig in time to the music. Something wonderful has happened, something marvellous, something I've always dreamed of. The Queen has a new hat, Coco suggested, stretching her toes and clambering out of bed. No, Fuzzy tried not to sound exasperated. Better than that, Coco gasped. <gasps> what could be better than the Queen's new hat? Scarlet Cleaver. Fuzzy rubbed his paws together in glee. The world's greatest cook is opening a restaurant right here in Strawberry Park. It's going to be called the Meat Cleaver. Well, that's a horrible name for a restaurant, Coco said. And it's a stupid idea. Strawberry Park's got about 3,000 restaurants already. She strongly disapproved of Scarlet Cleaver, who, unlike the Queen, always wore very revealing dresses. And, continued Fuzzy, ignoring her, she wants guinea pigs. Rubbish, retorted Coco, who suddenly felt a little jealous. It's not rubbish. I saw an advert on the newspaper under the hay. Fuzzy was beginning to feel a bit cross with Coco. Guinea pigs wanted, good money paid. That's what it said. There's a picture of Fuzzy dancing to the radio. You're making it up, Coco sneered. That's rich coming from you, Fuzzy chattered, almost losing his temper. He took a deep breath. Don't you see, Coco? It's my chance to learn to cook things properly for Ben and Henrietta. I'm going to volunteer. He turned the radio up and wiggled his bottom in time to the music. Hush! Coco sat back and scratched her rosettes. She had the feeling something wasn't quite right. One can't think straight with that racket. Fuzzy was being deliberately annoying. He knew she preferred harp sonatas. Fuzzy groaned. Reluctantly, he turned the radio, which was on the floor next to Henrietta's yoga mat, down a bit, twisting the volume knob with his paws. Coco was quiet for a moment. Suddenly, she started giggling. You are silly, Fuzzy, Coco laughed. Scarlet Cleaver doesn't want real guinea pigs. She wants people to be guinea pigs. How can a person be a guinea pig? Fuzzy asked, puzzled. Being a guinea pig means trying something out. Coco let herself out of the cage and sauntered towards him, fluffing her whiskers. So why get a human to be a guinea pig when a guinea pig can be a guinea pig? Fuzzy couldn't understand it. Coco looked at him with some sympathy. He really wasn't very clever. It's an expression, silly. Humans use them all the time. It's like when Henrietta calls us chalk and cheese. We're not really chalk and cheese, are we? It just means we're completely different. She helped herself to some of Henrietta's special hand cream, which was lying on the floor next to the yoga mat. Of course, she added, when one is brought up at Buckingham Palace, that's the sort of thing one learns. Rather like the harp. Fuzzy bit his tongue. Anyway, Coco continued unkindly, you can't cook. Ben said so, remember? So even if Scarlet Cleaver did want guinea pigs, she wouldn't want you. Now, let's forget all about it and listen to something decent. She twiddled the tuning knob, like a harp sonata. It was too much for Fuzzy. Stop going on about the harp, he snapped the radio off. I beg your pardon, Coco cried, offended. I said, stop going on about the harp and the queen and her hats. His nose was twitching furiously. Face it, Coco, you've never lived at Buckingham Palace. You've never met the queen. You can't play the harp. You came from a normal family and you were dumped, just like me. Coco stared at him in dismay. Fuzzy, how could you say such cruel things? Her voice quivered. You've hurt my feelings. It didn't occur to silly Coco that she might have hurt Fuzzy's feelings as well. Fuzzy didn't apologise. He started pulling the jump towards the computer desk. Coco followed reluctantly with a squashy cushion. 
She didn't ask what he was doing. Bounce me up, he ordered. Bounce me up, please, she said sulkily. It's taken a running jump. If Scarlet Cleaver wants guinea pigs, Fuzzy muttered crossly, arriving on the desk and surveying the computer screen, that's exactly what she's going to get. He started to tap at the keys. Coco didn't hear him. She'd retired to the cloakroom to dry her eyes on the stack of quilted toilet rolls Henrietta kept there. That night, instead of snuggling up beside one another as they usually did when the blisses got home, Fuzzy and Coco, both still not squeaking to one another, went to bed at opposite ends of their hutch. Oh dear.